All right, so we got how Dead Island 2 was brought back from the dead. Let's go back to the video. It's been about 10 this years a since the de uh, Dead Island game. houses semi-canceled like a couple of times. Spec Ops line developer Jaeger has officially been removed from the creation of Dead Island 2. Is that a bit of a poison chalice? Dead Island 2. I'm going to give my take on this after the video. At this point. Initially so we're just going to watch it right now. Its journey has been almost as treacherous as a runner trying to make it along Venice Beach in the midst of a zombie outbreak. Kind of gives a whole new meaning to the term fresh kicks, right? <laughs> Two studios tried to put a sequel together, but were met with little more than a gory disaster. This is an interesting move. This is a game we haven't heard about a lot in a while. It skipped E3. Now we know why. Dead Island 2 has found its new developer. Could this be the one? I had no notion that these years later I'd actually be working on that sequel. But while those projects died, hope did not. This is one we've all been waiting a they duped us. They duped us, bro. They duped me, bro. I, I, thought, it was, I, I thought it was GTA when he was talking about that. Spots, right? We didn't want to announce vaporware. We didn't just want to come out with a CGI and then have people go, well, is there really a game? Over the course of nine years and three developers, the long-awaited zombie killing sequel has kept running or walking on. And now it is finally at the finish line. This is the inside story of how Dead Island 2 was brought back from the dead. Okay. Okay. Ooh. They're dropping that whole they're dropping like that whole like little um like little I mean I guess documentary or whatever on the 29th. Um okay. Here's my take on this. Hopefully you guys didn't leave yet. Here's my take on this, right? When it comes down to it, right? Again, we haven't had a dead uh Dead Island game. First of all, I'm just giving you my take on Dead Island 2. I like it. I think it, it looks really good. I like it. I like the story mode. I like the characters, blah, blah, blah. I think it's a pretty solid game, in my opinion. Um, all right. Here's what I think about this. Now, we haven't had a Dead, Dead Island game Dead Island game, in, like he said, nine years. I thought it was ten years. But, it, again, it's been a long time. Uh, Dead Island 2 was pushed back a lot. It was supposed to come out... Yeah, 2014, 2015, right? And they just kept pushing it back. My thing is, right, a lot of people, and, 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 you know, you, listen, you're going to run into a lot of people in the gaming community that have different takes on stuff like that when it comes to, like, pushing back games. In my opinion, when a company, when a gaming company or uh, just a, a development team or whatever is pushing back a game, that that doesn't, I, I see that as a good thing, Right? And I know that people are like, oh, what do you mean? Let me explain, okay? Uh, what I mean, th think about it. For example, we got games like Atomic Heart. Atomic Heart, in my opinion, did really good. That game, the first beta or alpha came out 2018 or 2019. And um, if, you, if you look at footage from then and now, brother, brother, the game looks 10 times better. The story mode, 10 times better. They obviously, they changed some things up in those, uh, in those four to five years. So when it comes down to it, I'm not saying that every game is going to thrive if they keep pushing their game back. But at the same time, like, you, you know, some people see that as a bad thing because, oh, they're holding out on their fans. They're, uh, they're lying to their fans. They, they just want their fans to, you know, like, it, it, people, will, listen, people will make up anything to try to, like, come up with a bad conclusion on something. For me... I think it's a good thing, bro. Um, for instance, I mean, I wouldn't say... Honestly, we don't even know. I feel like some people do know. But most of us don't even know if GTA 6 was pushed out. I feel like GTA 6 was pushed out. Um, if you think about it, GTA 4 came out 2008. Then GTA 5 came out 20, uh, 2013. Now, that's a five-year gap. And if you see, like, the difference between the games, obviously, people are going to say GTA 4 is better. But in my opinion, bro, GTA 5 is one of the greatest games ever. Uh, statistically, like, like by sales, by hype, GTA 5, in my opinion, is one of the greatest games of all time. It's definitely top 10, okay, when it comes to sales and ever. All right, but it's, this isn't about GTA, but I'm just trying to give, like, a, uh, like a comparison. If you look at, like, the graphics and everything like that from uh, 2008 to 2013, whatever, GTA 4 to GTA 5, whatever, big difference. And, and then now, we're, we're now in 2023, no new GTA game. I feel like, I wouldn't say the game was due, but I feel like, I, 
yeah, I feel like the game was ready, like, at a certain time. Obviously, I can't point out a year, but, like, brother, it, it's been 10 years. Well, it's almost about to be 10 years, right? So, I, I feel like GTA 6 was definitely pushed back, a, I wouldn't say a bunch of times, but, like, brother, it's GTA. I feel like Rockstar wants the best for the game, and so they're going to take how, however long it takes. Think about it. I, 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 <laughs> I played GTA 5 when I was what? If we do the math, I played GTA 5 when I was 10 years old. That's crazy, bro. That's and, and guess what? GTA 5 is still doing numbers. But at the end of the day, we're not here to talk about GTA 5. Again, I was doing a comparison. I feel like GTA 6 was, push, was pushed back a bunch of times. Again, it's Rockstar. We all know Rockstar brings their A game uh, when it comes to GTA. We know that. And so... When it comes down to it, if you're a development, if you're like a young developer, if you're like, if you have like your own little game, whatever, my advice to you is obviously I'm a nobody, but my advice to you is if you don't feel like your game is ready, do not drop it. Even if you have like a big fan base behind that game, do not, if you, if you feel like, you know, it's not ready. If you and your team feels like, you know, your game is not ready, do not drop it. Do not drop it, you know. Uh, another example, with the new Star Wars game that's coming out on the 28th, right? That was pushed back. Uh, it was supposed to come out on March 17th. That's pushed. It got pushed back a month later, right? And so, obviously, you know, I'm a big fan of the game, so I wasn't... Obviously, I'm not going to get mad. Like, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sneak into the headquarters and, 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 and snatch the disc, like, out of their computer. Like, what? I'm not... <laughs> like, like, I don't understand how people... Are, oh, my God! Oh my God, 2K just got pushed back a month later. I mean, I get it. You want the new game, but at the same time, you got to think about it, bro. They just want the game to be perfect. That's how I see it. That's that's how I see it. Some people, they they just, you know, they just want the game quickly and stuff like that. But, you know, if you're a young developer, if you if you are, you know, creating your own game, you have your own team, whatever, even if you're in the, even like, if you're like a big developer, right? If you look at my videos, literally if your game is not ready if you feel like your game is not ready do not force it out don't just put anything out you know and for example we have we have companies like call of duty right that make a game every single year what's as impressive as its own as I, I don't care what bias you have against call of duty it's impressive that they make a game every single year with a campaign with uh with either zombies or spec ops with multiplayer they literally make a game every single year so that's something that i that i give call of duty props for because um, it's kind of hard to make a game every single year and for it to be different. Now, I know a lot of Call of Duty, <laughs> a lot of Call of Duty fans are going to be, you know, looking at me like, bro, well, the, the game's not different at all. Blah, 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 blah. You know, that, you know, to each his own, you know, that, that's your opinion about it. I'm not going to knock down your opinion, but we, we all got to like, you know, we, we all got to give Call of Duty their props. They make a game every single year. And listen, well, okay. I'll probably say Call of Duty campaigns are top tier. Call of Duty Modern Warfare campaigns are top tier. The Black Ops campaigns never really got into those, but the Call of Duty Modern Warfare like campaigns are, bro, I, listen, top tier, bro. Absolutely top tier, bro, in my opinion. But, you know, so, some companies could do that. And honestly, it, it just depends on the game, bro. Honestly, Call of Duty can do that. NBA 2K they can put out the game every single year. You know, I, I feel like NBA 2K is the easiest. Obviously, I'm, I, I'm, I don't work in the uh, video game making industry. Like, I'm, I'm, I've never made a video game before. But, like, I reckon, you know, NBA 2K is a little easier. All you got to do is just change some overalls and, you know, and stuff like that. I know, obviously, I know it's more in-depth into it. But at the same time, I feel like, you know, making a new NBA 2K game is easier than making a new Call of Duty game, in my opinion. But... What do I know? Um, other than that, um, well, yeah, you know, to any, you know, new developer out there, any new young developer out there, you know, honestly, bro, for real, take my advice on this. If you don't, if you don't feel like your game is ready, don't put it out. And so this is why I respect uh, the developers at Dead, at Dead Island 2 um, that they didn't, even though it took them 10 years, they waited until, you know, the first of all. They waited until until the graphics was up to par, right? And I know graphics isn't everything, but graphics help. Let's for me, for me uh, again. A lot of people vary, you know. A lot of people, you know, value gameplay over graphics. Uh, a lot of people, you know, want gameplay and graphics. I'm well, I think that's most people, including me. But um, you know, me, I'm a big graphics person. I love graphics. I love the resolution. I love everything like that. 
in, in, in like in like the visuals like area. So like the fact that like I, I love the, I like how the game looks in my opinion, you know. And so the fact that they took their time with that, bro, and you know they really and, and listen. <laughs> Some people I can only imagine on Twitter. I don't go on Twitter. But I can only imagine what people are, are, are saying about, you know, Dead, Dead Island 2. Oh, we waited 10 years for this. You know how people are. I've already seen something like that before on Twitter. I, I've already seen it. it is, it's people are. And that's another thing to any young developers, you know. L listen to criticism, not hate. Okay. There's a pure difference. Pure difference between criticism and hate. You, you need you, you yourself, right? And I'm pretty sure you're smart enough. You can literally find a line between those two, bro, because those two are not the same thing. But um, other than that, comment down below. What do you guys think uh, of this video? I'm most likely probably gonna like watch the watch the video of like the whole. I don't know if it's like a doc or something like that, but I'm probably gonna like, watch like the whole story about how uh, Dead Island Two came from the mud, bro, and now it's doing it's doing good. Uh, a lot of people are playing it on Twitch. A lot of people are playing it on YouTube. Uh, I think it's really fun, and um, yeah. I'll see you later for the next one. I'm out. And.